Hey, hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and in today's video, we are doing sort of the ultimate heat press comparison. So I have a lot of heat presses. Um, this comes from being a blogger, I do a lot of testing. So I thought I would go through all the heat presses I have, which you can see here, plus there's a couple behind me that wouldn't even fit on my table. Um, I thought I'd go over the pros and cons so that you can make the best decision for your needs and budget. There are several reasons why you might want a heat press. The first is you're working with iron-on vinyl or other similar materials. These are sort of cut on a Cricut or a Silhouette or other cutter, um, and then you kind of um, weed out that negative space, and then you can apply those materials to a blank, like a t-shirt, using high heat um, of one of these heat presses. The second is sublimation. Sublimation is also sort of a heat transfer product, but it involves ink instead. You print it on a specialized printer, um, and then you use the heat press to apply it to a blank as well. Cricut crafts and sublimation crafts are sort of my bread and butter, so you can check out more on my YouTube channel here, or go to my blog for all sorts of tutorials to help you out. This video is just about heat presses, but I will be telling you um, what you can do with each of these heat presses, whether it be Cricut crafts or sublimation crafts. Um, I'm gonna start at the bottom here with this iron, and then we're going to work our way up um, in features and, of course, price. Um, so let's get started. To start, let me just tell you, moving all those machines around is a workout. Anyway, we are starting with the iron. This is just a regular household iron. It probably cost me about 40 bucks. And a lot of times this is where people start when they're using iron on vinyl. It's not hot enough for sublimation. So if that's your craft, you can go ahead and check this one off the list, but you can use it for iron on vinyl. That being said, it does not have particularly even heating. So a lot of times the center of the plate will be very hot um, and the edges of the plate will be not quite as hot, um, but making it a little hard to make sure that you're getting all of that iron on um, laid down perfectly and that adhesive activated. I've also found that when I use an iron for iron on vinyl, my iron on vinyl doesn't last quite as long. I think that's because of the uneven heating. It just does not get hot enough to evenly activate that adhesive. Next up is the Cricut Easy Press. I think this was launched in 2017 as an alternative to a traditional heat press. These actually took the market by storm. They are affordable, they store really easily, and they are way less intimidating than a traditional heat press. Obviously, these are for pressing flat things like t-shirts and tote bags, and onesies and those sorts of things. Um, they can't do a mug, but they do work really well. I'm really impressed with these little machines. The Easy Press comes in three different sizes. It comes in small, medium, and large. I don't actually think they're making the small one. You may be able to find it like on eBay. Um, I actually really like this one, and I'm kind of bummed that they're not making this size anymore because one, it's it stores really easily, it's not very big at all, and two, it works really well on things like onesies where you're trying to get um, the flattest press in between the seams of your garment. My small Easy Press and my large Easy Press are both the Easy Press 2. They go up to 400 degrees, so you can use them for sublimation, though I still think a traditional heat press, um, which has more pressure, is better for sublimation, but you can make these work for some sublimation projects. In the center here, I have the Easy Press 3, which is basically the same machine. It's just Wi-Fi connected, and there is an app called Cricut Heat that helps you set time and temperature settings, so it's a little bit more foolproof, um, although these two are very easy to use as well. As far as cons go, um, the biggest one is the uh, pressure. So any pressure that you wanna use with these presses, you have to use yourself. So if you have you know, a chronic pain disorder or if you just don't, if you're not very strong, a lot of times putting down that pressure for things like sublimation can be a little difficult. This is why I recommend a regular heat press that applies the pressure for you for sublimation, but you can make these work. But I find that if I use the time and temperature settings from the manufacturer for the material that I'm using, I can usually get really high quality presses out of these machines. Cricut also makes this tiny easy press mini, and I am not gonna lie, I love this thing. It's like $49, but it works so well. Technically it gets hot enough for sublimation, but it's so tiny that unless you're only making very tiny projects, I don't think I would use this for sublimation, um, but it works so well for heat transfer projects of all sizes. It's really easy to use on small projects like kids t-shirts or even regular adult t-shirts, um, but I actually made a 48 inch by 48 inch baby blanket covered in a constellation using this little press. And I just put it over my um, ironing board and was able to just press all the way through it. And it worked really well, almost better than one of the bigger easy presses because you just have so much more control on where your heat is going. And then I have one little hack. This is also really great for pressing perler beads. If your kids love perler beads, like my kids love perler beads, this little guy works so well. I actually bump it up to that really high heat setting, presses them in no time. So if you're looking to upgrade your iron to a bigger press and you can't really afford one of the easy presses, this little guy is the way to go. Next up is this guy, which I call the beast. He is my five-in-one heat press. 
So this is basically a traditional heat press and they can be really intimidating for new users. I remember when I got mine, I actually didn't use it for months because I found it so intimidating. But once I got using it, I actually used it a lot because I like the pressure. So with the easy press, you have to apply all that pressure yourself. With this, you just got a handle, you just crank it down and it applies the pressure for you. You can walk away, you can set up your next project, you can check Facebook or whatever. And then when it's done, you can just lift it up and you can take out your project. Now there are two types of traditional heat presses. Mine is a swing arm. So this actually swings away so that you can place your project here on the mat. The other type is a clamshell. So you'll see that with the Cricut Auto Press here in a minute, but it basically opens up this way. Um, so this takes up a little bit more room, but I really like that I don't have to be near that hot plate. Um, but with a clamshell, a lot of times that doesn't open very wide and you're like trying to get your project in there. Um, and the heat, the heat plate is like just right there and you can burn yourself really easily. So if you have the space, I would recommend a swing away. If not, a clamshell does totally work just fine. Just be really careful. If you are gonna buy a heat press like this, I would recommend getting one a little bit higher quality than the one I have. I'm gonna be honest, this is broken. It just stopped working about a month ago. Um, it's been sitting by my door to get rid of because no matter what I do, I can't seem to get it to work again. It just won't turn on. Um, so if you are going to get a heat press, I would suggest to spend just a little bit more money and get one from a reputable dealer instead of Amazon um, that might be able to have customer service support for you. This one came from Amazon. I probably got it in 2018. It's well out of warranty, um, but I would have liked it to last maybe longer than four years. I feel like it should have lasted longer than that. So I am going to upgrade probably from a press, um, maybe a wall of press from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I think that's going to be my next big purchase. And then this guy is going to go to the dump, the electronics recycler. I'm not sure I got to figure out what to do with it, um, but I will say it did not last as long as I had hoped. So the pros of this machine are that pressure that you can add. You can actually adjust the pressure using this crank here in the back. Not a particularly elegant solution, but it works. Um, I really like that it just applies its own pressure. I like that I can walk away, that I can set up my next project or whatever I'm working on. Um, but there are some cons. One is it's ugly. <laughs> like it's just not very pretty. Um, they do make um, slightly more attractive heat presses um, that come in a variety of colors, but this one in particular is just not the most attractive thing I have in my craft room. It's also just a little difficult to set. It feels just like a little, I don't know, it's just not the sturdiest machine. Um, so you do set your time and temperature over here. The constructors are like this big and like half of it was in Chinese. So it was a little hard for me to um, figure out how to work it. But once I did, um, I actually ended up using this press a lot. Next up is the Cricut Auto Press, or as my husband likes to say, this is the biggest waffle maker he's ever seen, which made me laugh. So this is Cricut's um, alternative to the traditional heat press we just looked at. And it's actually very different, um, but also the same. So it is a heat press. It's designed to press flat objects, just like the traditional heat press or the Cricut Easy Press or your iron but it has some cool features. So the biggest thing is that it has auto pressure. It's why it's called the auto press. Um, so instead of on the, um, on the last machine, you have to turn that little crank to get more you know, or less pressure. And sometimes you just don't know. You're like, this requires heavy pressure. Is this heavy pressure? And you're like closing the handle and you're like, I don't know, feels like heavy pressure. There's nothing that really tells you. This, however, sets the um, pressure automatically, which is really nice. So I don't have it on here because I am moving all these presses around and honestly, I just didn't want to wait for it to cool. But when you put your project here on the mat and you close it, it closes so easily. You don't need to use all that power to close it like you do with a traditional heat press. You can just use your hand here and it will kind of click shut and then it will make a sound sort of like, I don't know, spaceship doors closing. It's like And that is the actual, um, the press actually um, increasing the pressure automatically. And then it also has this control panel for setting your time and temperature. You just turn it with the knobs. It's very easy. There are actual presets here. If you decide to use a, you know, a certain preset a lot, you can just click the preset. It works really easily. I do wish this was kind of integrated into the machine. It's kind of awkward having this um, little box next to your machine, um, but it works. It's just not quite as elegant as I think it could be, um, especially for the price of the machine. One of the other features is that when it's done pressing, it just pops open. Now, I love this feature because sometimes I don't have a, you know, I'm in the middle of something and I don't want to walk over and lift up my heat press. So this just pops open and that's awesome. It does scare me. <laughs> um, it makes a little beeping before it goes, but it goes beep ka chunk and like kind of flies open. Um, so it is a little, you know, startling sometimes, but I love that auto open feature. Like I mentioned with my other press, that one's a swing away. So it swings away, you put your um, project down on the mat, and then you swing it back and you press straight down. 
Now with a clamshell, sometimes you don't get that straight down press because of just the way it comes together. It can like actually force your project out a little bit. But Cricut has this very um, fancy hinge here that kind of makes it both a clamshell and a swing away. So basically it functions mostly like a clamshell, but you see here it takes up a lot less room than if you had to like swing this lid all the way open. Um, but once you get to um, about, I think it's about four inches above, it actually then presses straight down, which means that you don't have that issue that a lot of clamshell heat presses have where it sort of like forces the fat, you know, forces something into that wedge. Um, so that's actually a really nice feature. It's very clever. Um, and it also means that you can press fairly thick things with this. I think up to two inches thick is um, what Cricut says, which is awesome. So that brings us to the price, which is a lot. So it retails for $1,000 and you're probably like, uh, no pass, fast forward, and that's totally fine. Um, it is not worth it for everybody. I can be honest there. Um, but if you're running a small business, um, I actually really like a lot of the features of this machine. Um, the features that it has are often in higher priced regular heat presses as well. Um, you know, I think a lot of times that, especially newer crafters were like, I'm gonna pay about 200 bucks for a press and that's totally fine. But there are presses that go up well more expensive than this at the professional level. So a few of the features I like, just if you're running a small business, I like that auto open feature. That means I can be working on what, you know, setting up my next product, but I don't have to be babysitting the machine to open it when it um, is done pressing. I also really like that hinge I talked about, the fact that it is um, sort of in a clamshell shape, but it does press really flat. Um, that just feels like it minimizes error. And I also really like that auto pressure. I actually have a chronic pain condition and using a lot of force on a lot of things sometimes just can hurt my body. Um, so for me, this just works really well because it just like, I literally can just close it with a couple fingers and it works. I don't have to use all of my strength to close it like you would with a traditional heat press. So everything we've covered so far is for pressing flat items. Everything from the iron to the easy press to the easy press mini to the traditional heat press to the Cricut auto press, all for pressing flat items. So now let's look at some specialty heat presses. This is the Cricut mug press. And honestly guys, I did not wanna like it. And honestly guys, I really like it. <laughs> it really is a specialized machine. Um, it's designed to only press mugs, but you can press other sorts of drinkware blanks in it. Um, there's some tumblers and some other things that fit in it as well. Um, and other companies outside of Cricut are starting to make more things that will work with this press, which is really exciting. I like that it is so compact. You, you'll see here in a minute, I also have a tumbler press, which is much larger. I like that this can fit very nicely on my shelf and it doesn't take up a lot of space. This is designed for sublimation. Um, I think people have tested heat transfer vinyl in here and it just gets too hot that it actually melts the heat transfer vinyl, so you don't wanna do that. So this is for sublimation. You can use Cricut infusible ink or you can use a sublimation print. It's very easy to use. You just wrap your mug in your design with some butcher paper around it, slide the mug or other tumbler in here, press, and it will count down for you. And then when it's done, you pull it out. It's super easy. This machine is awesome. I've probably made a hundred mugs in it in the last couple years. And honestly, every one of them has turned out flawless. Any mistakes I've made have been my fault, like putting the design on backwards. Um, but every time I make a mug in here, I'm shocked with just how perfect the results are. So this is a great beginner machine if you're just starting out wanting to make mugs and other specialty blanks like that. Then I also have my PYD Life Tumbler Press, which I also really like. Um, it's not nearly as big as some of the other tumbler presses out there. They have um, recently integrated the controls into the front of the machine instead of having a separate box on the side, which I think makes the footprint of this, while much bigger than the mug press, um, actually a very reasonable size for a tumbler press. So it's fairly easy to use, a little bit more complex than the mug press. Um, but if I turn them on its side here, you can see where the tumbler goes up here in the center. You can actually swap out the um, heating element in here. Um, this one here is a little bit smaller. You can get ones that are much larger, which um, allows you to press a variety of blanks. To change out that heating element, you just make sure to unscrew it here and then unscrew all of these little screws here at the top and then you can slide out the heating element. You can slide in the other one and plug it right back in. The version that I got came with this um, insert as well as that other one I just showed you. Um, but the nice thing is, is you think it's mostly for tumblers, but you can also actually do two mugs in this at one time. So if the mug press, if you have a small business and that mug press is just not producing quite as fast as you need, you can do two mugs in here at a time, which is pretty awesome. This one also does those very popular 20 ounce skinny tumblers. You can technically hack it in the mug press um, using inserts, but um, I see a lot of people getting um, just varied results. Here, I get good results with this press every time. Next up is a hat press. So if you make a lot of hats, you may wanna have a press like this. Um, I have the Cricut hat press, but there are um, traditional hat presses that look a little bit more like the traditional heat press. I actually think that heat press came with a hat press attachment, which I've never used, so I can't even compare it. Um, but this is the, the one I have. So I don't make a lot of hats, but I did a campaign with Cricut and they sent this to me. And I do think it's pretty easy to use. 
So it has this form here. Um, just so you know, this has walnut shells on it in it. So if you have an allergy, this is not the product for you. But basically you put your hat on here with the, um, the place where you're going to put the image um, face up. And then you use the curved plate of the hat press to basically press on the design to your hat. Um, you can use this for iron on vinyl and you can use it for sublimation. This is a very specialty product, so unless you make a lot of hats, um, it's not one I would necessarily think you need in your arsenal, but if you love making hats, it's a great option. And then finally, we have the convection oven. So this is a convection oven that was made specifically for sublimation. Um, I got it from Heat Transfer Warehouse, but you can use any sublimation oven as long as it goes up to 400 degrees. Um, if your um, oven says air fryer, you can also use that because an air fryer is basically a convection oven. You do want a separate oven from your regular kitchen oven when you're doing sublimation um, because there are toxic fumes that are released with sublimation and you definitely don't want to be consuming those so get yourself a separate oven for crafting. There are two ways to sort of use this oven. The first is shrink wrap and the second is silicone sleeves. So you can make all sorts of projects in this oven without a specialized heat press. You can make tumblers and mugs and plates and dog dishes and shot glasses and all sorts of things um, because they make shrink wrap and silicone sleeves for a lot of these products. My preference is shrink wrap. So basically you'll take, say we have a tumbler, you'll wrap your design around the tumbler and then you'll slide it into a um, shrink wrap sleeve and then you'll put it in the oven. And the shrink wrap will go and it will basically shrink to the size of your um, tumbler. And this basically mimics the pressure of a heat press and presses the design to your project. There are also silicone sleeves and I'll be honest, I have not had good luck with them. I know other people have. Um, I've tried several different ones with mugs and I always get ghosting at the top and bottom, which not cool, don't love it. Um, so I prefer the shrink wrap, but you can definitely also try those silicone sleeves if you'd like. The biggest con is that it's really big. And if you have a small crafting space, this is a large amount of space for something to take up. It's also not really designed for flat projects. You're definitely gonna need some sort of different press for that, but this does work for a variety of blanks using one of those two methods I mentioned before. All right, that was a lot of heat presses and I went through them fairly quickly, but hopefully it gave you an overview of what's out there and what might be best for your budget and your needs. I've written or filmed tutorials for pretty much all of those, so I will link everything in the description below as well as links to buy any of these presses. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about today, I would love to answer those for you in the comments. If you like this video or found it helpful, I'd appreciate a like. Subscribe to my channel for more weekly Cricut and Sublimation content. I'll see you next week.